Hello everyone watching. Thank you all for joining my third weekly wisdom video. I am Joel Bondarowski, founder and executive director of PPC Designs. I am also SEM Rush's PPC Academy professor, and for this week's weekly wisdom video, I will teach you how to set bids in Google Ads. Now, why is bidding so important? Bidding is important because when you're doing pay-per-click advertising, you are empowered by being able to choose the maximum amount that you want to pay-per-click for any given keyword. But in order to do proper bidding, you need to know what that amount is. This is something that is really mysterious to most people, especially when they first get into Google Ads. But really, the formula is quite simple. And the formula basically is one that lets you know what the value for each one of those clicks are. After all, in order for you to be profitable in the pay-per-click campaign, you need to pay less per click than the value that the clicks bring. So understanding the value per click, or VPC, is the essential component in understanding the amount you want to set for your max VPC bids in Google Ads. So let's begin. The first thing you're going to want to do is to log into your Google Ads account. Once in your Google Ads account, you need to extract a report, a keyword report, that gives you the data you need in order to determine what those maximum cost per bids are, cost per click bids are. Now there are two ways to extract this report. One is from the reporting section in Google Ads, and the second is by viewing a keyword list in the keyword view in Google Ads and simply clicking on the download icon. Both methods will effectively download your keywords with the stats you need in order to set bids, but for the purpose of this demonstration, I will walk you through the steps of doing this from the reporting section. Now, the reporting section has a few advantages. Uh, the main one being, actually, is that it allows you to save the settings for the report so that you can run it on a regular basis. In fact, you can even choose to have them run on a schedule so that way you don't have to manually go in there and set it. This is really very important due to the fact that bidding is something you're going to want to do on a regular basis. You're going to want to regularly download these keyword reports, run these formulas that I'm going to lay out for you, and determine and, and adjust bids on words that are profitable so that you are making more off of them and lower bids on, on keywords that are losing you money. So once you log into Google Ads, click on Reporting. Next, click on Custom. After that, set the conditions for the report. What are the conditions? Well, first of all, you need to choose a time range for the performance data that you want to look, uh, look at. Next, you'll want to filter just relevant campaigns. Afterwards, we're going to want to go ahead and add our dimensions and metrics for or the report itself. Next, we're going to want to drag our dimensions over to the reporting section, starting with campaign name. Next, go on to ad group name, then search keyword, search match type, search keyword status, after we've chosen our dimensions, we will then want to drag over our metrics. The metrics that we're going to choose are impressions, clicks, cost, as well as conversions. Next, click download as a CSV. Now, as I mentioned before, it is sometimes a good idea to schedule these reports so that way they're run for you on a regular basis or you could also always save them so that way you could easily access the same report whenever you want to run it. Now that you've extracted the data from Google, go ahead and open your Excel. Next, save the Excel file as an XLSX file. Select the keywords column and find and replace equal signs to blanks. This is necessary if you have broad modifier keywords which begin with the plus symbol. When you open them up in Excel, Excel will think it's a formula and automatically try to equal them to something. So we can go ahead and uh, get around this by finding and replacing them as I just outlined. Next, I think we're going to want to clean up the report a little bit. By clean it up, I mean let's uh, remove and hide some of the columns that aren't relevant for us for uh, this task that we're uh, performing. Let's start by removing the top two rows, which uh, you know show the date range and the name of the report. 
Next, uh, we could go ahead and delete that currency column. We don't need to be seeing that uh, this reports uh, that, that this reports in dollars over and over again. In the example that we're doing here, we're uh, setting bids and keywords that are run across many campaigns and also many ad groups. But uh, to kind of like drown out some of the noise, let's go ahead and hide those columns. And now that we're done, we could go ahead and look at what we have. Well, at this glance, it's a little bit overwhelming. I mean, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see that we're looking at a keyword list with over 3,600 words. So when we're glancing at it, you really can't deduce very much or understand a thing about it. I'm going to give you a tip right now, and this is a very important tip. Whenever you're looking at a report, such as a long keyword report, or placement report, or any type of report, and you want to make sense of it, the best thing to do is to sort by top values down. So I'll go ahead and do that. And since uh, we're wanting to see uh, the most significant spenders first, let's uh, go ahead and uh, select the column for cost and sort it from top to bottom. Next, we'll start a calculation for bids. Now, I, you may have heard me explain this in the past, there are really two values needed in order to determine the value of a keyword. And that is the keyword's conversion rate and the value of the conversion itself. I'll repeat that. The conversion rate represents the percentage of clicks that become sales. The value of the conversion is the value of the sales that those clicks bring. So I think it's pretty simple to see that if you combine the two, if you multiply the two, you're actually then able to see the value per click. For example, let's say that the value of a conversion is $100 and 50% of the people who enter your website purchase. I mean, this is a very, very uh, high rate. It's probably never going to happen, but it's a very easy way to understand this concept. If the value of a sale is $100 and half the people who enter purchase, the value of one person is $50. It's as simple as that. Now let's say 1% of the people convert, which is generally a more reasonable conversion rate when you're selling something that's worth $100. Well, when that happens, you multiply your 1% conversion rate times 100, and you'll find that you have a $1 value per click. That means that you can pay a dollar per click for that keyword and break even. Obviously, breaking even is not our goal with any advertising effort, but in order to get there, we need to first understand the value of the clicks that we are buying traffic with in our PVC campaigns. So let's go ahead and calculate our conversion rate. In column I, we'll label it as CVR, which is an abbreviation that I like to use for conversion rate. The formula to calculate conversion rate is quite simple. You just take the number of conversions and divide it by the number of clicks, which I'll enter in cell I2, and then drag it all down by double clicking on the bottom right corner of the cell. Next, I will display all the numbers as percentages by, by selecting the column and clicking on the percent symbol. After, we'll want to move that decimal spot over two spaces so that we see them to the hundredth of a percent. And now we're finally ready to calculate our VPC or value per click. We'll go ahead and do this in column J using that very simple formula that I explained before. Now, in this example that I'm giving right here, the value of one conversion is $50. So, in, in cell J2, we'll apply this formula for value per click, which is the value of, this, of, this, of the conversion, $50, multiplied by the conversion rate, and we'll drag it down again as we did with the conversion rate formula by double-clicking on the bottom right-hand side of that cell. Since this value is in dollars, let's go ahead and select these cells and click on the dollar sign to set the formatting as such. And wow, there you have it. The value per click for this entire list of 3,600 keywords is determined we can go ahead and set them as our max CPC bids in AdWords. Actually, really not quite, I'm sorry. I wish it was that simple, but no, it's really, 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 really way more complicated for than this. Why? Because this formula only works to give you the value per click of each one of these keywords if you have confidence in the numbers. So let's go ahead and look at this report a bit differently so that I can explain this to you a bit better. Let's now sort from, uh, from top to bottom on the clicks column. And I'm going to give you some news that might look a little bad. The bad news that I'm going to tell you is that we really don't have any confidence in conversion rates 
for any of the keywords after about the 30th or so in the list. The reason is, is that any of the keywords below 30 really don't have significant statistics, which allows us to accurately calculate their conversion rates in order to calculate, accurately determine their value per click. For example, if there's a statistical fluke on any of the keywords on the top of the list, which would give one of those keywords maybe one or two more or fewer conversions, the conversion rate would more or less be the same. Like, for example, if there's a keyword with, uh, you know, 500 clicks and 50 conversions, you give it 52 conversions, the conversion rate is going to be very close to uh, what you were, well, as, as if it was 50. However, if you were to add or take away one or two conversions from one of the keywords after these 30, that extra conversion or two would make a big difference. So if one or two extra or fewer conversions can make a big difference in the performance of a word, you don't have a dependable data, you don't have dependable data to determine a conversion rate in order to give you a bid that you can trust. Well, this sounds awful, doesn't it? I promise you that you, you're, that you could control your campaigns, you can make them profitable by understanding your value per click and setting effective bids. Well, actually, no, it's really not that bad. And I'll tell you why. So I'll go ahead and select the spend of the first 30 keywords in the list and see something that actually, uh, you know, makes things start looking a little bit better. The sum of the value of those first 30 words is $30,000. $233.40. However, the sum of the spend of all 3,600 and so keywords is almost $54,000. This means that 31 keywords comprises a 56% of the spend of over 3,600 words. That's right. 31 keywords, that is about 0.8% of the keywords in this in this account is spending 50 56 percent of this uh, of, of the total well now it's becoming a little bit better I mean I'm starting to realize that I can at least have control over 56 percent of the spend that's already getting somewhere now to make the situation look even better we can sum up the conversions of the, those first 30 keywords and compare them to the sum of that entire column as we did with the spend and we'll find that those first 30 words are responsible for 64 percent of the conversions in that entire account this means that they're performing with a better cost per acquisition than the overall average of those for those 3600 words they're bringing a sale at 47 dollars while the rest of the account while the whole account is doing it at 53 dollars as i said earlier the value per conversion for this account is fifty dollars so if we want this if you want these campaigns to be profitable we can't be spending fifty three dollars per acquisition so a very simple way to turn this account into a google ads money making machine without digging into hard and digging in too hard into statistical analysis and coming up with complex formulas in order to figure out how to give the best bid possible for that long list of more than three thousand six hundred words that we don't have significant stats on is to simply focus on the th first 30 keywords, which are giving us a nice ROI, which are giving us a positive return on investment, and either cut out completely the rest or drastically lower their bid so that way their spend is within check and they are also bringing us as a whole a positive ROI. So, a very simple way to turn this account into a Google Ads money making machine without digging into difficult statistical analysis on those 3,600 and so low stats keywords is to simply focus on the 30 words that you can easily set accurate bids with that very simple formula I laid out and either drastically cut bids as a whole on the words that you don't have stats on so that way immediately they stop becoming a drain in your account or if you want to be even more drastic, you could just cut those keywords out completely. Just pause them, stop spending on them. Once you're able to, once you're able to get good performance with the main set of words that you know are very dependable, the very manageable 30 words, you can start to introduce those other words back into the account. They'll start to get statistics. You'll be able to start bidding on them in an effective manner. So that way, 
they're also contributing into this beautiful Google Ads money-making machine that is turning a profit for your business week in and week out. So that's it for my weekly wisdom video for this week. Thank you for watching. Join me the next time we're going to revisit this report and show you how to deep dive into it further in order to set better set bids, optimize a bit better for profit, and also optimize the traffic that you're driving your campaign. This is all to enhance your PPC perform performance to get the most out of your Google Ads efforts and dollars.